you submit an application, the core is a personal statement, like for many of these things, I think it's called a letter of purpose or a statement of purpose. It's a statement of purpose. Right. Um, it's kind of a pretentious name. <laughs> uh, it's five, they say five to eight letters, but like a lot of these things, you know, five to eight means eight. Um, <laughs> if, you, if you really want a competitive application, you need seven or eight letters. Um, the application itself focuses less on what you will do at Oxford. Some of these things are very much about, you know, you're going to grad school and this is what I'm studying and this is what I'm going to do in the lab. Uh, we don't have anyone here from the Marshall today, but I think Marshall applications focus more on that, what you will actually do at the program of study, whereas Oxford, or the Rhodes selection process really focuses very little on your time at Oxford. Um, it's more about what you've done already and how, you, how that informs what you will be doing sort of further on in the continuum that you described. You apply in the fall. Um, like many of these things, you submit your application to Denise. There's a committee here that will determine if you're going to get interviewed. Um, and then if you get interviewed, they'll determine if you get nominated by Amherst College. Um, so that's the first step. Then you'll submit, assuming you've sort of passed that hurdle, you will submit to the Rhodes uh, secretary. They'll get it to the right committee, and they'll determine whether you're a finalist in your particular district. If you are, you then go on, there's a weekend, there's a cocktail party, there's an interview, you do sit there all day, it is very stressful, um, and they tell you that day, so this is nice, or horrible, um, you find out very quickly, um, but you're also kind of standing there in a firing squad. Um, so it's nice to be chosen. And, and well, um, so I would say, look, the application process is stressful, but it's also enjoyable. And I think the people that do well are people who are able to find some enjoyment in it. You are being interviewed and you are being asked about yourself by very intelligent people who are genuinely interested in who you are and what you do and what you want to do. Um, so there's, you know, a little bit of sunshine uh, in a stressful. My own sort of story is that I had done, you know, I'm a, I'm a progressive Jew from New York City who was always interested, always knew that I was only going to do nonprofit work. Private sector was never interesting to me. Um, when I was an Amherst student, and this is, I think, relevant to you all, I did a series of public service internships through, well, now they're all in the Center for Community Engagement. When I was here, they were not. Um, they were focused mostly on issues of homelessness and housing. Um, and they built on one another. And I used each experience in, from my summer to build on the following one. I actually didn't do much in the way of extracurricular kind of community service during the academic year here because I played sports and I was focused on studying. But the summers, I think, are a really useful way um, to build different parts of yourself and to explore different things. So that actually helped me get a Watson Fellowship, which I'm not going to talk about. Um, which then continued to focus on issues of homelessness and housing internationally. Uh, so I was in Chile and South Africa. I had a lot of phenomenal international experiences. Um, and that also built on the fact that I'd studied abroad, uh, which for those of you who are sophomores and not juniors, I would just say absolutely study abroad. Um, in, and it's, I mean, not just because I think it's an intrinsically good thing, which I actually think it is, but also you develop this richer set of experiences and you get a better understanding of what you might want to do. And if you're thinking about going abroad maybe to do a fellowship, you know, these are really useful experiences to have and to get to know yourself a little better. Um, in the application process, it was interesting to hear what you were saying about getting the different recommenders. I think, I mean, it's absolutely right. And I'd never done it sort of intentionally. I had the good fortune of having great recommenders who could speak to different parts of myself you know, by no design. Well, maybe by Denise's design, not so much by mine. So definitely think about those things. Um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about what it's like to study at Oxford. Um, I first did a two-year master's in international development. It was both, Oxford has, and much of the UK has a difference between a taught and a research degree. Um, so sometimes you do a one-year degree, which will just be your own independent research. Sometimes it'll only be coursework. The MPhils at Oxford, the two-year programs, are kind of a combination of both. You do mostly coursework your first year and mostly research your second. Um, I've then extended that into a, doctoral, um, into a doctoral thesis, focusing on the same issue. I work on the community participation in Central America. Um, in terms of why Oxford and why I chose to be there, I wanted to do international development 
and when I was initially not sure I wanted to apply for this, it was because I didn't know if there was a program that was kind of right for me. But it turned out the UK, in particular, focuses on development issues in a way that I found that US grad schools didn't really. Usually international development in the US, as far as I know, is put under the umbrella of public policy programs. So it's kind of a specialization within public policy programs. So I didn't want to do a public policy program. I wanted to do something that was specifically focused on this. Um, and in this respect, the UK was a good fit. 